Welcome back to another round of Am I the A-Hole? I will read you these Reddit posts and you will decide if they are an A-Hole or they are not. Am I the A-Hole? for making my parents kick my nephew out of their will. Okay, we are starting off strong here and we are starting off very controversial. I, 47 female, have always had a very strained relationship with my brother who is a 51 male. He's had a very bad accident when he was 17 and spent three months in a coma. Ever since he's been the child my parents swooned over and they make excuses for everything he does. I've been to therapy because of this for over a decade and I resented him for my parents forgetting about me when I was younger, even though I love my parents to death. My nephew, 31 male, has basically been raised by my parents as well. His mom passed away during childbirth and my brother lived with our parents till about four years ago when he moved in with his girlfriend. Because my brother is handicapped and doesn't have big mortar skills, a lot of the childcare was taken care of by my parents over the years till my nephew moved out of state five years ago for his job. A couple of weeks ago, my parents were meeting with their lawyer to set up their will as they're both no longer in the best of health and want to make sure we are taken care of. The only big thing that they have is their house and car. They were talking about that they want to split the inheritance three ways and I got confused and asked them why three ways considering it is just me and my brother. They said they wanted my nephew in there as well as they basically raised him since birth and consider him largely as their child too. I told them that's not fair as I have two kids as well and if my nephew is in the will they should be as well. My brother said what they are doing with their money is their business and I should stay out of it but I disagreed. Eventually my parents agreed and didn't give my nephew his share. My brother called it a giant dick move and called me petty to punish my nephew for the resentment I have towards him. We broke out into a fight that my parents have to unfortunately break up. My nephew called me a couple of days ago to check in on my youngest as he's her godfather. He'd already heard what happened and said that it was a bit of a Karen move to do, but he's unbothered by it as it's none of his business. But my brother is still very upset with me and my parents are rather cool to me as well. Am I the a-hole here? Interesting. Truth be told, I think it is just, it is their will. That is their life. That is their money. Who they give it to, I think is up to them. And I think it is their business. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't want anybody telling me what goes in my will. That That's my life. That's my money. That's my inheritance. It's, it's going to whoever I choose. Let me know. Are they the a-hole or are they not? It does feel very Karen vibes. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to live with my brother? I feel like if I lived with my brother, we'd have so much fun. I love my brother. My brother has, okay, different story. My brother has, I was being playful. This is a serious matter. My brother has autism. Therefore, he does not understand boundaries. For example, I was bending over to reach something and he came up behind me saying, it's right there so I can touch it then tried to touch me. He has also tried to kiss me and do various other things. My parents are divorcing, so I brought up the idea that me and my brother could alternate houses. So I live at my dad's while he is at my mom's, vice versa. However, my parents instead screamed at me and told me it was disrespectful toward them and my brother and I was being selfish and unfair. They know that my brother sometimes tries touching me and making inappropriate comments too. He's also very loud, rude, and annoying towards me and I don't even see him as someone I particularly care about anymore. Oh my God, this is a lot more serious and intense than I anticipated. Roll out your opinions, you guys. I don't think you're an a-hole. That's just a very difficult situation because that's your brother, that's family, that's blood. You're supposed to love and care for them. I totally, I see, I see it. I, I get the situation, That is, that's tough. Well, let me know what you guys think. Am I the a-hole for giving my nine-year-old niece a tiny amount of alcohol? Oh my God, we're talking about being a cool aunt. Well, if you're gonna drink hunky, I <laughs> hunky, if you're gonna drink honey, I'd rather you do it in the house. That's what it reminds me of, Mean Girls. <laughs> Cooking is one of my favorite hobbies and one of my favorite cuisines is Japanese. I don't have kids and honestly don't particularly like them, LOL. But my brother and sister-in-law have a nine-year-old girl. Once every three or four months, she comes over to my apartment for a sleepover. Usually we'll get something to eat, watch TV, play with my cat, and then go to the aquarium or something before I drop her back off at my brother's trailer the next day. Lately, she's been getting into anime, so we came up with the idea to make a reasonably authentic Japanese meal together. This was the menu. Y'all, I'm gonna butcher this. I don't know. Tuna, bok choy, seasoned simply with salt, sesame oil, and sesame seeds, white rice. 
Sencha. Okay, there's where I don't know what these are, you guys. I'm sorry, but there's a list of ingredients. I prepared this the day before since they have to marinate for 24 hours, and I used store bought Okapa since. Ain't nobody got time for that. But we made everything else from scratch together. Here's the thing. My sumono recipe is pretty simple and includes a list of ingredients. We had a good time, but apparently when my niece got home, she told her parents that she had alcohol. Okay, so one of these ingredients has some alcohol in it. And now my sister-in-law is pissy because I gave her child alcohol, even though I use one tablespoon of sake per batch of Simono, 16 ounces, so two servings. The girl literally consumed half a tablespoon of sake. Okay, it's sake. That's not enough to matter at all. My brother sees my perspective, but is asking me to apologize just to get this blow over. But I don't think I should have to. It's not my fault that his wife is uncultured and doesn't understand that a small amount of sake is integral to the flavor of Simono. I might be saying that wrong. I'm sorry. I so badly want to be like, fine, next time I'll give her frozen chicken nuggets and Kraft macaroni and cheese. I'm sure she'll be used to that. But I know better than to make the situation even worse. But am I the a-hole if I refuse to apologize. Okay, this is not the situation. I thought you were trying to get wrong with your nine-year-old niece. You just baked or cooked something that involves a type of alcohol technically. Even if you feel like you don't have to apologize, I might personally just be like, okay, sorry. I didn't think it'd be a big deal. My intention was not to make you upset by cooking this beautiful meal with her. Like, I didn't think it was a big amount. Like, I would I would probably apologize just to blow this over because it's not worth it. And like, I wasn't trying to do anything wrong, but I don't think it makes you an a-hole for doing that at all. I don't know, you guys, what would you do? What would you do? Because every parent has a right to be like, if they don't want, if they're not comfortable with that for their kid, then that is their right. Vaseline on my weenie. <laughs> I'm 10 years old. Am I the a-hole for wanting to pay less than everyone in our Airbnb because I'm on a cot and they have bedrooms? Interesting. I just flew across the country to attend a bachelor party. The wedding party picked a house that's short a bedroom, so I got a cot. Everyone has been asked to prepare the $600 for two nights. I would have booked a nearby hotel had I known. Am I the a-hole? Should I just go along and not make waves? I really don't think I should pay an equal amount for an unequal accommodation. I mean, I'll feel for you there. I wouldn't want to pay $600 for two nights on a cot when people got full ass bedrooms and beds. I don't think that's necessarily fair. I don't know, maybe some communication will go a long way. Maybe we can communicate our feelings about the car and being like, you guys, I'm sleeping on a car for two nights. Why am I paying the same if people were getting full bedrooms? Like maybe we can trade out. Someone gets a car one night, I get a bedroom. Like maybe some communication just needs to happen here. Am I the a-hole for exposing someone for lying about a disability? My God, these are controversial, you guys. I'll try to keep this short. I, 36 female, was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder at age five. Growing up, I made lots of friends with disabilities who are still my friends, two of whom are Marie and Andreas. In high school, this girl named Zoe somehow landed in our friend group. No one really liked her, but she had no one else. Zoe was a stereotypical mean girl who wanted to be popular, but couldn't get the in crowd to warm up to her. I found out later she often made fun of us behind our backs, including mine and Andreas's weight issues and Marie's lisp. <gasps> we all stopped speaking to her after high school, but recently, Anders called me flipping out. Zed gotten curious about Zoe and discovered Zoe had a blog about growing up with autism spectrum disorder. The entire blog was a manga of stories, I've never heard that word, of my life, Marie's life, and Andrew's life. <gasps> Here's a twist, I have ASD, but Marie has neurological problems secondary to a metabolic issue, and Anders struggled with ADHD and thought Z might have ASD until Z was diagnosed with schizophrenia. If it wasn't already obvious, Zoe had stolen our stories. She couldn't even get the disability right. While Anders unleashed on her in a blog comment, I took to social media and posted what she'd done. Since then, she DM'd me saying that she was getting crap about it from everyone and she'd have taken the blog down if I'd confronted her privately. She also said she was trying to better understand what it's like to be disabled. Maybe I should have confronted her privately and given her time to make it right, but I was furious because she dis emanated stories of our lives we didn't want made public. 
So am I the a-hole? If I am, I'll accept your judgment. It's easy to sit here and say, you should have just talked to her privately. Would that have been the higher road, the more mature thing? Of course, but I totally understand your feelings and your hurt and your anger. I don't think you're an a-hole. I think it was an a-hole move on what they did to you. <sighs> you guys, these are so controversial. It's hard to fully understand these situations, but let me know what you think. Am I the a-hole for turning off a video game that my son and his friends were playing? Oh my God. Gamers, I need you in the chat right now. I don't have a love for gaming, I'm sorry. So like, to me, it's like, ugh, who cares? But I know that this is a very disrespectful thing to do when people are in the middle of their game. They take this very seriously. My son had a sleepover with a few of his friends last night. They had gone swimming and played at the park before coming back to my house to play video games in the living room. I bought them a pizza to eat and was overwhelmed by the smell of 10 slash 11 year old boy armpits. I told them to go put deodorant on and they said, okay. I checked in with them a few minutes later and they still hadn't washed up. At that point, they started to push back. They didn't need it because they already put some on last night. I said, whatever deodorant they put on last night had gotten washed off at the pool and you all spent the last hours of running around in warm weather. I told them to go put some on. They still didn't put any on, so I turned off their video game. Apparently, they were just about to pass a difficult level. Oh, before I turned it off and they were very upset with me. My son later told me that I embarrassed him. I told him that I handled it the way I did because I was getting, I wasn't getting their attention. From someone who's not a parent, in my own experience as a daughter, I just, can't imagine not doing what I was told from my parents. <laughs> like, if my parents were like, you need to go do this, I, yo, I go and do it. I might talk back, like I'm not saying I'm an angel, but I wouldn't fight them on that because I'm in their home. You know what I mean? I don't know, like I just would have gone and put deodorant on. <laughs> so you're the parent, I guess it is your call, but handling it that way, uh, you knew they were gonna get upset. You knew he'd probably be embarrassed. So is it the best way to handle it? No, but as a mom, you call the shots. Your kids aren't listening. I don't know. Moms out there, gamers out there, let me know your opinion. Am I the a-hole for telling my stepdad that I won't be waking up early for him anymore? Me, 22 male, and my sister, 24 female, occasionally drive our stepdad, 40 something. <laughs> I love that they don't know his age to work, but lately he's been calling us at odd hours to drive him around town or to pick up his adult bed buddy. Oh, he told us last night that he wanted to be at work a couple hours early so he can start prepping for the day. He works at a restaurant. Did I get adult bed buddy? Does that mean like, that's your stepdad. That means that he's married to your mom. So what does adult bed buddy mean? Am I like, I was thinking of like friends with benefits, <laughs> like an adult bed buddy. Anyways, I don't know if I'm understanding. He wanted us to pick him up at 7 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. So we told him to be ready at seven, even though we didn't want to be up at that time. I work night shift and my sister cooks for college cafeteria. We go to pick him up and he's not even awake. So we try for 40 minutes to wake him up, but he's dead asleep. So we go back home to go back to sleep and he calls us at nine asking where are we and i don't know if it's the lack of sleep but we both snap at him we told him that he'll need to find a new way to work because we're both tired and my sister needs to get ready for her own job he's mad at us for making him late and i've got to know were we in the wrong here no he's literally in his 40s he's an adult that's his responsibility to be up at 7 a.m go to work if he said I need you to drive me at 7 a.m. No, I don't think you're in the wrong. I would have went home myself and put my ass in bed. All right, guys, that's another round of Am I the A-Hole? I will see you guys the next round because we are gonna keep playing. Stay classy out there. Stay sassy and don't be an A-Hole.